But seriously, Understand Hell of Life is a great album and you should listen to it. Please, please, please. It's really different from all other Porcupine Tree albums, but I promise it's really good. And Yellow Hair Road Dreams Cave as well too. Please give them a fair chance. Please, please. Please, 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 please. Okay, so the incident, I will dare to say that this is both the best and the worst Porcupine Tree album. Inspired by Catch 33, Steven Wilson had the idea of making a full single suite in a single disc, connecting songs between each other. Kind of a nice idea, you know? Porcupine Tree and prog albums in general are generally thematically cohesive in the way they do. So just like smashing them together, it's just kind of, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of nice. The thing is that I want to start uh, reviewing and writing albums again, but there are some things that I want to discuss about the writing system and why not. And, it, and it's cases like this that giving a uh, writing system for stuff with numbers kind of doesn't really work at all. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this record, okay? The reason why I think it's like the best but also the worst album is because it has as many great moments as it has bad dual moments that balance the whole experience out. I don't really want to get into what moments are bad, what moments are good. That can vary from person to person. But one thing you can say is that there is a lot of borrowed elements from Steven Wilson inspirations like Occam's, Occam's, Occam's? I have never pronounced that song name aloud. Like the first track, Occam's Racer, being a heavier version of David Gilmour's Short and Sweet. And song intro, it's like an intro, it's like da na 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 Short and Sweet is like na 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 da na 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 And Occam's Racer is like da na 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 I guess Great Expectations kind of reminds me a bit of King Crimson's Red, but it's very emotionally different. It has a lot of references and nods to other albums, uh, not just in the music, but also the song titles, artwork of the album, stuff like that. I think that if something is copied or not, it doesn't really matter in this context because I feel that if you recontextualize something, in an album like this, just enough, you will still be able to give something unique. People say, people say, pe people, people, people say, people say, people say, hey, time flies, it's just, time flies, it's just talks by Pink Floyd, what a ripoff. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that despite having a very similar structure and sound, time flies is a lot more emotional and has this certain fantasy and epic aura about it. This joke is an adventure. It's something that dogs on ship didn't really have because they're more like, they're more like, more whimsical songs. The lyrics are also very personal for Steven Wilson and I really like the track for that. So it's, it's nice, it's nice, it's a nice track. I really, I, I, I really, I really like this track. I'm going to tell you the truth about the originality, Keith. You're going to take the red pill. Okay, no, I don't want to use that reference <laughs> at this point in time. Anyway. One thing is that artists are always taking inspiration from others. And originality, at the end of the day, comes down to your ability to recontextualize your influences and hide your inspirations well. I feel that probably you don't really criticize time flies because it's reminiscent about something, but it's because reminiscent about something you're personally familiar with. And yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel, I feel that Steven also faced criticisms of this kind in the production of this album, where he says that there are charlatans that will sneer at them, but he says that there isn't really anything new under the sun. I don't really like how that quote usually sounds, because it implies that you can really make something unique out of something that is not unique, at least unique to you, but I get the sentiment that he was going for. 
So actually, I don't want to criticize the album for taking references here and there that I do find that songs don't evolve long enough. Actually, actually, while keeping each moment as its own song with a chorus and verse structure, it's incredibly tiring and difficult. Yeah, this is actually, this is, they, they stay stagnant, they stay stagnant, they stay stagnant, they stay stagnant and they don't evolve enough. Yeah, this album, this, this album stays stagnant. Boring, boring criticism, boring criticism, who cares, who cares, who cares? What I actually like more about the incident is that it gets to be the quirkiest of all the post signify albums of Porcupine Tree. It's not really a funny or goofy magical album like On the Sunday of Life is, but all its dark and evil tones just feels really quirky. Occam's Razor repeats itself like twice and it just feels like someone banging to their guitar but because of that i really love the track and i really like its reprise i i even use it as my ringtone sometimes we you know i'm i'm still one of those weirdos that still uses a ringtone because i want to play it the song you know I, I can't explain how but this guy is a genius the title track starts with this industrial i mean industrial electronic influenced kind of atmosphere but it ends in a more wistful epic note while steven sings about wanting to be loved drawing the line is really cheesy and your unpleasant family talks about someone dealing with a family that smashed their car and that he found evil and vile or something. Octane twisted on the scenes. The sands. The sands. Okay, okay, I will look it up. We don't really want to do anything ridiculous here, do we? Octane twisted and the sands start into this acoustic, solemn piece and evolving to this quasi tangent fanfare that is. Circle of Manias. Manias. To me, it feels that Steven was really inspired by Catch 33 and Meshuga at this point in time. He looked at them and wanted to get really heavy. Like, really heavy this time. So, you get like this mix of these beautiful pop songs, like A Turn of the Horse and Time Flies. But you also get like quirky, dark, rock songs like Circle of Manias. Um, and, and the blind house like it feels like they want to get heavy but they feel more like going to a futuristic haunted house instead i guess <laughs> the incident is a quirky edgy child and if you aren't really a quirky edgy child like me you might find it kind of bland and actually he already matched this mix of sounds before he got already really heavy in fear of a dark planet and left the most beautiful emotional moments in other songs. You have the dark songs and the beautiful, more solemn songs in another part. Anesthetize is a sweet, yeah, true, but it has three separate movements that they are mostly independent on their own just work as a suite because they build up onto one another. But you know, since the incident is a whole blown out suite, the whole album, all moments are built up, are just smashed down together. Doing a suite with its own movements and build up connected while having the songs using their own chorus, verse, chorus, verse structure is kind of insane because it's are really tiring. You really have to cut the introduction of a song and start the song in its first bridge and then end the song in like the second bridge and only at the release of the song in the next song but the next song needs to start over again. It's, it's just what it is. It's just what it is. It's absolute insanity. It's what it is. Insanity. Insanity. But actually, I think this result is kind of neat. I like it. I like it. I, 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 I personally, personally speaking, I like it. And while most people will not enjoy this album, this kind of mishmash formula, I do. 
It is the album where Steven was trying to expand his compact, tight, alternative prog rock formula and wanted to add some crazy metal in a full moving suite. And you can see where the risks were taken to make the suite kind of work. There is a reason why I keep listening to this album, it's because it's the most fun I had with a modern porcupine tree record ever. There are amazing highlights, like I Drive the Earth, like one of the best songs of the band, period. And you can even see that some of the standalone songs also feel more consistent, even when they actually kind of repeating a lot the structure at the end, I guess. So overall, overall, what I'm trying to say is if you want to listen to the incident, just keep in mind that it's quirky. It's quirky. They are, they are a quirky, edgy child. And if you're really a quirky, edgy child like me, you will probably find it kind of bland. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes the incident are a bit tired of themselves and they don't really know where to go. But if you really pay attention to them, you will get to experience the times they can really be a genius and make you cry out of the motion. Come to think of it, with all of its flaws, the incident is the closest of all the Pure Pine Tree albums to be an actual person. So yeah, probably the historical rating of this album is like maybe 20 points out of 100. Don't really worry about it, I will explain everything about historical ratings in the next video, I hope. The historical rating is just going to be a geeky, nerdy thing. And trust me, trust me, trust me, it's, 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 I will explain it in the next record, in the next album. Now for my personal enjoyment rating, which is different to the historical rating. Uh, I don't know, I think this is kind of fucked. You have moments that are really, really low and I feel like I wish I was listening to a fear of a blank planet instead. And there are moments where I say, Steven, please take me. Take me. We are not here to discuss my private Steven and Reader personal fan fictions, alright? So yeah, so, so yeah, this is one of the albums that make me think that sometimes writing albums with a numeral writing kind of stuff is a bit of a flawed system. The album has a lot of highs, a lot of lows. What do you do? Take an average? That is just loony, I tell you. Loony! So yeah, this is like the Porcupine Tree album that I have listened the most, probably. The only thing I could do is take away a star of the writing because how much I really dislike the bad moments. But that doesn't really explain how great the big, quirky, solemn, nice moments make me feel, so it's kind of confusing. By now, let's give the incident 70 points out of 100 points in the personal enjoyment scale. Alright? It's, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I mean, probably, I will probably change it the next time I listen to it. But hey, that's what we get for trying to read emotions with math. So yeah, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I know a lot of Porcupine fans don't really like this album. Some do. It's a very divisive album. And that's why I wanted to bring it as an example about how rating systems are fundamentally broken. It's not that I don't want to write albums and stuff. I like writing stuff. It's fun. It's fun ranking stuff albums and trying to figure how you will kind of sort them out by enjoyment. It's, it's a fun process. But please, let's try to not take ratings way too seriously. Maybe, perhaps. Music is not really a sport. It's not about performing the best with a objectively good metric. So yeah, for this channel I'm trying to say that maybe uh, let's rate things out of fun, but don't take things too seriously and we can leave everything up to discussion. I mean, personally I think that how much I enjoy an album is not really up for debate because it's something about Oh, I can't connect with it, I guess. But if you can make me enjoy the album even more, well, that's even better. 
you know what they say. The best reviews are the ones with no score at all. Free form, baby. Uh -huh. <laughs>